Okay, traders. Welcome to this week's live trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. And um, before we get going here, I just want to check that you can hear me and see my screen. So if you can, can you type a Y in the chat box? You should be able to see a Tickmill welcome screen, a Y in the chat box to confirm that you can hear me loud and clear and we are good to go. Good stuff, thanks very much. So before we jump into today's discussion, as always, I want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most importantly for today's uh, presentation is that the views expressed here by me are solely mine. They are not indicative of or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Um, also, just a, a quick uh, bit of housekeeping here. If you have any questions with respect to any of the charts that I cover, or um, you want me to take a look at a chart that I don't cover in, in my deck, then uh, if you can make a note of those and at the end of my presentation, I'll open up a, uh, a brief Q&A and we can cover off any questions you might have with respect to the charts we cover, or if you want me to take a look at the chart that I don't cover. Okay, so for those of you here that are here for the first time, brief introduction to myself. Like I said, my name is Patrick Munley and after I graduated from King's College London, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I then left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Having a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, quite literally at times overnight, I decided to explore my curiosity for markets. With some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started uh, day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately at that time, it was uh, day beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out and as the market phase changed, I began to essentially average down uh, into losing positions, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure financial hit. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is, uh, is really an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of about 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game, researching, developing, extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during my period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you really lose that emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a string of trades. My focus on the next hundred trades, because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm engaged in other market-orientated projects. I am a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily 
uh, technical trade setups uh, for two to three markets per day. I also run uh, Tickmill's rapidly expanding uh, e-mini strategy group where I provide a daily specific trade plan with intraday trade updates. Since its inception in April, I've delivered over 1,050 points of upside. My other passion project, I guess, is leading trader education for a premier trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com. We offer development and funding to retail trading talent. At FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindset development through our structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. Most recently, I've been involved in developing the Trader Blueprint Strategy Group, which is a professional trading community where traders of all experience levels can access daily institutional insights from tier one investment bank trading desks and market strategy teams. There are regular market bulletins with in-depth positioning and sentiment analysis, along with actionable real-time chart analysis with daily setups and trading updates from a team of expert traders. Um, with, we also look at uh, trader education sessions, helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets and, most importantly, the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a pro. So that gives you a sense of where I'm coming from and my experience and current projects. I would say that we are offering um, free trials to both the uh, Tickmill eMini strategy group. I'm going to uh, post the link into the chat. Uh, you can get a two week free trial and see exactly what we're doing in terms of the uh, eMini e -mini s and uh, Also likewise, the Trader Blueprint program, we are offering uh, a free two-week trial to that group as well. I post the link in there for you. So I strongly suggest you take advantage of, uh, of those two uh, free trial periods for those strategy groups uh, where you can really enhance your, uh, your training experience. So let's move on to the charts now. I've got a bunch of charts I want to go through, some setups that I want to uh, highlight and uh, an update on some of the trades that I've uh, been in since last week. So uh, this is the E-mini S&P, the daily time frame. Uh, since the lows put in last March, we have been tracking an equality objective, which is up now at 46.14 for these, uh, for these futures, these E-mini S&Ps. And um, we have seen a bit of weakness as was, uh, as was suggested that we might do. Uh, we pulled back into uh, the support zone here around 44, 45. Uh, I was short most of last week, uh, managing to take out uh, 42 points on the short side. Yesterday, I went, uh, I went long the E-mini S&P and took out uh, 20 points on the top side yesterday. I'm now looking for the potential for us to break uh, to the upside here. And if we can get through this descending trend line resistance that comes in now around 44.95, um, then I see the potential for us to trade to that target zone at 46.14. However, importantly, if we cannot uh, if we cannot take out the trend line resistance and we get a rejection there, then I'm actually looking for prices to pull back into this uh, monthly range support prior lows here back down into the 43.50 zone. So. Pivotal um, couple of sessions coming up. We've got quadruple options expiration, uh, quadruple witching, sorry, coming up tomorrow where future, single stock futures uh, options all expire tomorrow and that can lead to a bit of volatility. So we'll see if, uh, if that volatility is actually gonna spike us up through the resistance or we're gonna hold resistance and, uh, and take another look to the downside. Similar story obviously in the S&P 500. Um, this is uh, the E mini is the um, is the derivative contract that trades uh, tracking this is obviously the bigger S and P five hundred. So we're in the same situation here. We're trading. We're watching uh, resistance at the forty four ninety well forty five hundred area uh, in the S and P here. If we can't break to the top side, then again, what we're thinking about is the equality objective, uh, which would actually see us trade down into uh, this major trend line support that comes in at 43.93. That's projected off lows uh, from last March. Uh, the, the way that that trend line is actually achieved is by tracking this trend line here and then overlaying it versus the single point at this stage. 
and this will be the second test of that potentially significant uh, trend line support. NASDAQ. So again, NASDAQ sitting at the, well, we, we, held, we tested monthly pivot, got a nice rejection yesterday. We need to get back through the weekly pivot to set up a move to get us into uh, this 15,900 level. And then from there, I'll be watching as long as we've got divergence for another leg to the downside to ultimately play out. Um, but certainly yesterday got a nice bullish rejection of the monthly pivot. And uh, if we can trade back through 15,545, then we look for a test of 15,850 to the upside. DAX posted this one earlier in the week, uh, has a bit more of a bullish structure at the moment. Uh, we didn't even test the uh, trend line support. We held the monthly range support. Uh, if we can get back through the monthly pivot now at 15,810, I'm looking for a move up to test 16,280. And then I'd be looking for this bearish momentum uh, divergence to, to be addressed and ultimately bearish reversal patterns in this area, set short positions, certainly looking for a move down into the 15,000 level. Nikkei has been the outlier, the strongest after for quite a long period of time being the weakest of the, uh, the major global equity indices. Uh, we're seeing a bit of a pullback here now, but uh, this structure certainly looks bullish. We haven't got any momentum divergence really into that high. So that would suggest that this is gonna be an interim high. We have got a, a five wave sequence here. Um, so any pullback back into uh, to test this descending trend line resistance now to act as support 28,600, I think is going to be uh, an opportunity on the long side. And ultimately we look for uh, a move up to test uh, 32,000, which is the, one to two, the 127 extension of a potential wave for low here. And that's the minimum upside object, objective you get for a fifth wave extension uh, if, if this is going to be our current wave four. So uh, we could actually trade as high as 33,700 to 161. But uh, certainly the minimum upside objective now, as we hold support, will be a test of that 32,000. Dollar index. Still tracking and looking for this, uh, this wave four high here to, uh, to play out. Uh, it's been pretty choppy trading at the moment. The market really is in, in, in a holding pattern as such, uh, certainly with a bunch of these FX majors uh, as we go into next week's FOMC. And are, you know, are, the, Fed, uh, are the Fed members uh, going to coalesce around the idea of the tapering? And uh, what, you know, when do they see that potentially happening? Um, certainly it's looking November, December time at a minimum. So uh, that's why we're seeing the dollar uh, just trading choppily in this range. We'll wait to see next week if, uh, if they do uh, give us some solid, in, in, <coughs> uh, solid indication of when the tapering is going to commence, then uh, that could lead to a dollar pop here. And the target we're looking for is this 94.15, uh, which is the yearly pivot. Gold, pulling back. Uh, looking for a three-way corrective move here now. Uh, and then what we could have is a nice inverse head and shoulders pattern to play with. Um, watch for bullish reversal patterns in and around 1750. Then we look for a test, third test of descending trend line resistance, 1850. Before then, I think making the big move down to test this equality objective versus this swing high here, uh, down to 1520. Silver. Uh, bearish on silver against this swing high, looking for a retest of 22, uh, 2230s. And then I think maybe we hold the range support again, and then we can think about targeting uh, range resistance back up into the 28 area. Crude oil had a perfect test of the equality objective. So we have A, B, C, 62.55. Uh, traded down to 62.19, and then we've seen this strong reversal. So what I'm watching for now with crude is I'd like to see it get back up into this 74, 74 area, and then get a decent pullback into, uh, into this support zone coming in at around 67.30, before then extending up into the fifth wave objective, the minimum upside objective uh, versus the fourth, fourth wave low here that we have uh, gives us Actually, let's extend that. Let's, uh, bear with me one second here. 
we've actually got a higher, there we go. So 81.15, the other, the other level to pay attention to is this 80.30, that's the 127 extension of, uh, of the pandemic meltdown basically in there is what we had in crude oil. So this 80.30, 81.15 is the upside objective and looking for an entry into that trade. Ideally, we get a pull back into this uh, prior trend line resistance now to act as support. Uh, we've got the monthly pivot coming in there. So something like this back into this zone will be an opportunity on the long side to target 80.30 to 81.15 on the upside is what I'd be looking for. Copper. As copper holds resistance here at the 4.4551, I'm actually looking for 3.8552 as a major way for low then. Watching for bullish reversal patterns there, set long positions. And again, we're looking at a minimum upside objective there of uh, 5.03117 in terms of copper. So uh, breach of the monthly pivot here, 4.2789 will be the first indication that we're going to make this move down uh, and test the equality objective versus this swing structure here. Bitcoin. So we had the move into the target zone. We have since pulled back. I'm now looking for a three wave correction to get us back into this 41,700, 41,600 area. If we can hold there as support, and what I'm actually looking for is uh, for Bitcoin then to, uh, for bulls to step back in, retest prior cycle highs, consolidate, but ultimately break out to test the 75,000 area, which is the projected ascending trend line resistance. Um, if we lose support here, monthly range support 39,680, uh, then look for a test of the ascending trend line support 36,600, uh, sorry, 33,600. If we fail there, then we actually have an equality objective. I'm just going to draw this in so you can visually see exactly what it is I'm talking about. We have this swing, this swing, and the equal legs would actually have us down into 17,395. Less probable, um, possible, but less probable at this stage is what I would say. Uh, so those are just the, these are the key levels that I'm tracking in terms of Bitcoin. My major cash holding was entered down here. Um, in an October session. Uh, it was actually the first uh, live trade analysis session I did. I highlighted a, a setup in, uh, in Bitcoin, but I'm, I'd be certainly watching some of these key levels as an opportunity to add, and uh, we have an upside objective at 75,000 track. Ether. I shared, uh, I shared this one earlier in the week. Whilst we hold a uh, weekly range resistance here, 30, uh, 37.56, look for a move down into this support zone now, the 27.95, as an opportunity uh, to set long positions, watching for a bullish reversal pattern there. And, uh, and then, I can, then I think we can start to think about 46.78, the 127 extension of the corrected zone uh, to the upside there in terms of ether. XRP, a little bit more, um, well, there's the potential for a more complex corrective move, but as you'll see, I'm, I'm basically looking at the same idea that whilst we hold this support area, so anything in the 80 to uh, 63 level, I'd be acquiring um, XRP here. So there's a potential that we do chop around, but ultimately, once we get through this descending trend line resistance, we have a target and ascending trend line up at 2.30, depending upon how it trades, 2.38 potentially. Uh, but those are the upside objectives. So I like to, I'm going to be looking to acquire XRP in this support zone and, um, and then look for this, uh, this trend channel uh, to play out and get the test to the top side. Dollar Yuan, bullish on this now. I'm looking for a break of the uh, this trend line here to play the inverse head and shoulder scenario. So if we can get a close back through 644.88, then I'm going to be setting uh, long positions and certainly thinking about a test of 658.57 on the upside and potentially then back up into the yearly pivot 672.60. 
dollar yen. Got a potentially bullish scenario developing here. We're sitting at this ascending trend line support. If we can get a bullish reversal pattern today, then I'm going to be looking to set long positions, uh, get a break of this descending trend line resistance, 110.33, up into the top sides of the diagonal here, 112.50. And then we actually have an equality objective uh, versus this swing structure. So we have our A up here, we have our B down here, uh, coming in at 113. So some pretty juicy upside targets there if uh, if we can get this bullish reversal to uh, to play out. Dollar Swiss breaking out of its uh, of its descending trend line resistance here. What I want to pay attention to with Dollar Swiss is the potential that we are simply going to clone uh, the move the price action that we saw here. So we could get this we could get an extension up into this resistance. And then pull back again, consolidate before uh, the market really decides on uh, on direction. So I'm a little bit wary of dollar Swiss at the moment, as we have this. You can see the similarities in terms of the price action uh, mirroring market mirroring there. So keeping an eye on it, but uh, no immediate action for me to take there. Prefer to play the, the dollar yen really, as the, and the dollar yuan as the dollar story at the moment. Um, Looney watching for. Uh, this move here, so we have an A, B, and a C here, which would also give us an inverse head and shoulder scenario um, in terms of the loony. So uh, watching for any move back down into this 123.60 or 123.20 equality objective there uh, versus this current swing high would, uh, would be of interest, but nothing immediately to do there. Uh, Singapore dollar, I'm, uh, I'm looking at uh, getting in on the long side here, looking for a break now of this descending trend line. So something around 134.50 will, uh, will trigger me in on the long side, using a protective stop down here, 133.70, and uh, certainly looking for a retest of the yearly pivot here, 136, uh, 136.88, and then an equality objective up to 138.20. So just looking for that confirmation on a break of this uh, descending trend line resistance here, and then that's going to be sufficient to have me on the long side in terms of the Singapore dollar. Euro rolling over, looking for the euro to test into uh, 117.55. That's going to be a key test. I've actually got a four hour chart here that I'm monitoring. You can see here we have the potential to put in a, uh, an inverse head and shoulders scenario. Let me just draw that in for you. We can find the tool. Yep. So there's some there's some nice uh, time and price symmetry here with this euro. So this could be a fly in the ointment for those dollar trades, but we'll see uh, which way it breaks. If we can hold this support zone here, um, look for a move back through this descending trend line resistance. So something around 118.35 as a confirmation there. To, uh, to get in on the long side in terms of the euro dollar, and then we can think about 120. So that's uh, a setup to pay attention to on the four hour time frame, and you can see what it is that I'm tracking there on the daily. Euro yen, similarly, inverse head and shoulders potential scenario here. Needs to hold this support 128.50s. If we can get a bullish reversal pattern, then I think we can break to the upside here in the euro yen. Alternatively, if we don't find uh, the support there, then I'd be thinking about downside objectives, uh, certainly back into 126.50s in terms of the euro yen. Euro sterling, still looking for the breakdown here to get us into this uh, descending trend line support, the 127 extension to complete, but I think then will be a major uh, wave for low, and then we could see the potential for uh, a decent recovery in terms of euro sterling. So that's just one that's on the radar. Euro Aussie, You'll see if, you, if you're tracking uh, this panel here, you can see the, what, the ones that I've got colored with either a red or a green or immediate opportunities that I'm looking to potentially trade. Uh, the ambers are just uh, patterns that I'm watching. So this one, for example, in the Euro Aussie, if we can get down into this area, then I'll certainly be of interest, but nothing immediate for me to do. Cable, had this had the long on last week in terms of cable uh, and took uh, got triggered out on the reversal for plus 50. Um, it's in a tricky position at the moment. We're in kind of in this high volume area 
uh, heavy rotation, no, uh, no clear setup for me at the moment. Sterling Yen had, uh, had this game on the short side yesterday and uh, I got in, it was running about 40 pips in profit, uh, moved stops to entry and got taken out. So if we can take out this uh, 150, 70 area, then I think we can look for a test of 149 on the downside. So I'm going to keep an eye on that, uh, that Sterling Yen. Sterling Swiss, conversely, um, seeing some strength, obviously, in line with the, the Swissy weakness. Uh, if we can get a, uh, a close here through this trend line and get a pullback and test, I think there's a potential for Sterling Swiss to extend minimum upside objective for a fifth wave there, 132.50s. Uh, let's rattle through these now as we're running out of time. Aussie, nothing to do at the moment. Um, no clear setup for me there. The Aussie yen, however, again, in line with a bunch of these yens, uh, potential for that inverse head and shoulder scenario. I think I've got this marked up on the four hour here and take a quick look. So you can see it a little bit more clearly here. Um, so I'm watching, if we can get back through here, uh, this 80, 30 level, I'll take a look at this on the long side and, uh, and see if we've either completed a correction or we are gonna map uh, this phase of price action here, overlaid here, but still plenty of opportunities there, 100 pips uh, of range to play with. Aussie CAD. Uh, let's go to the daily on the Aussie CAD, it's a little clearer. Um, So again, thinking about this inverse head and shoulder scenario. So if we can get a bullish reversal here with the Aussie CAD, I think we can uh, we can see some upside in terms of uh, in terms of that pair. The Aussie Kiwi. This is one I'm paying very close attention to. We're getting a bit of a rejection here now. So this is uh, a chart hit that I posted. We're testing this descending trend line uh, support projected versus this trend line uh, to the upside. There we guys. And what? Uh, What's up in there? Bear with me. We've had uh, Chrome has had a uh, bit of a meltdown here. Let's see. Coming back. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, so, yeah, so this Aussie Kiwi, if we can get a move back through 103.30, I'm going to be looking at this on the long side. Uh, I want to pay attention to how we trade, obviously, at the trend line resistance, 103.70. But if we can get through there, I think we've got uh, the potential for a, a squeeze there to the upside. Paying close attention to that one. Kiwi, looking for a break of these, uh, these tails here. 71.57 area. And then I think we can think about 73. Uh, 30 monthly range resistance on the upside. Kiwi Yen, similar story to the other Yens I've been talking about, We're testing this uh, projected tr um, ascending trend line support. And if we can get, uh, if we can get a test there, 77.30 bullish reversal, um, 79.30 on the upside will be the initial objective. And last but not least, we have the CAD Swiss, similar story, inverse head and shoulders, watching for a move back through the pivot cluster here at 86.90 to set long positions. And again, then we've got a minimum fifth wave upside objective coming in at 93.03. Um, so those are the charts that I'm watching, the setups that I'm tracking. It's really going to be important today to see, well, today and tomorrow, to see how uh, these equity markets respond because they're going to be a driver then of risk sentiment as they have been uh, of, uh, of the past few weeks, really. So want to really pay attention to, uh, to see how we, we trade in the, um, in the equity markets, because that's really going to be a key uh, factor in, uh, in how this dollar plays out and how these yens trade as well. Okay, so uh, does anyone have any questions? Is, is there a chart you'd like me to take a look at that I haven't covered? Equally, if you don't have a question, and, uh, and I've done a fairly good job of explaining things, if you type an N in the chat box, so I know that we're all on the same page and, uh, and I can wrap this session up. I do strongly suggest as well, take advantage of the, uh, the free trials to the uh, Ticknell Futures Group and the Trader Blueprint Strategy Group.
where can I find VWAP setting? Uh, I'll, I'll send you that uh, separately, Bannery. Any other questions? Okay, I shall take the, uh, the silence as a no, and uh, we'll wrap this one up here. We will reconvene same time next week. And, uh, and like I say, take advantage of those, uh, those free trials for those strategy groups. Okay, as always, traders plan the trade, trade the plan. Most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.